ever received a forwarded message like this? Before you turn off your device, have you ever wondered how this is even possible? Cosmic rays making your phone emit dangerous radiation? Hmm, you're right. How is that possible? But wait, what is radiation? Before we discuss what radiation is, we have to go back to where it all begins. The atom. This is the most basic unit of matter. Every solid, liquid, gas, and plasma is composed of atoms. So it makes up everything you see. That includes you and me. Whoa, cool! The atom itself has a nucleus, which may be made up of two types of particles, protons that carry positive charge and neutrons that have no charge. These particles are held together by a force known as the strong nuclear force to form the nucleus. Orbiting outside the nucleus are electrons that carry a negative charge. The attraction of the electron's negative charge to the nucleus's positive charge is what keeps the whole atom together. Do you remember the periodic table? Yes, we studied it in our chemistry class. Every element listed in it has a specific number of protons and neutrons. Sometimes, an atom can have too many or too few protons or neutrons. Let's take a look at the isotopes of a hydrogen atom. Hydrogen 1 and 2 is stable, and hydrogen 3 is unstable. In this state, the atom becomes unstable, or what we call radioactive. Radioactive atoms would naturally want to return to its balanced or stable state. The atom's nucleus does this by releasing energy. The excess energy may be released by the nucleus as a form of radiation. The process of releasing this energy is called radioactive decay. Ah, so that's where radiation comes from, from the atom itself. Is there only one kind of radiation? Radiation can be in a form of electromagnetic waves or particles. Yikes! But before you start panicking, you should know that radiation is a normal part of our lives. It is present in the environment at safe levels. This is called natural background radiation. Apart from cosmic rays and electromagnetic radiation that reaches the Earth, there are decay products naturally seeping from the soil and radionuclides naturally found in food and drinks. Oh! I didn't know that. There are also artificial or man-made sources of radiation, which include medical x-rays, industrial gamma rays, and in some extreme cases, fallout from testing of nuclear weapons. Radiation may be ionizing or non-ionizing. What's the difference between those two? Remember that warning you received from your cell phone? Yes. Does your cell phone emit harmful radiation? Yikes! Does it? The quick answer is no. Great! In order to illustrate this fully, we should discuss how radiation is classified. This is an electromagnetic spectrum. It is divided into two classifications of radiation. The non-ionizing and ionizing radiation. Ionizing radiation has enough energy to cause chemical changes by breaking chemical bonds. This is what can damage living tissues beyond certain limits of exposure. On the other side of the spectrum are the non-ionizing radiation. It has energy enough to excite molecules and atoms causing them to vibrate faster. But unlike ionizing radiation, it does not cause severe damage to living tissues. From the non-ionizing side of the spectrum, we can start classifying sources of radiation that you might be familiar with. Starting with ELF, or extremely low frequency sources, for example, transmitted signals of AM radio stations, radio waves from FM radio stations, and cell phones. Yes, 
cell phones use a frequency that is known as UHF or ultra-high frequency. The same transmission is used for other forms of communication like TV broadcasting, GPS, walkie-talkies, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi. Microwaves are a type of electromagnetic radiation like in radars or in your microwave ovens which use super high frequency or SHF. Microwaves excite molecules producing heat energy to cook food very quickly. Does this look familiar? Why yes, I have one of those. Yep, this is common even in the classroom. It's a laser. But do you know that it is a kind of radiation? Laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Did you know that your remote control also uses radiation to change your TV channels? Really? Remote controls that have infrared technology use infrared light. It's a kind of electromagnetic radiation that can only work for short distances because of its shorter wavelengths. You can see that as the wavelength increases length for microwaves and radio waves. The lower the frequency of the radiation, which means the energy is also lower. As we move to the other end towards the ionizing radiation side, the wavelength becomes shorter. The frequency becomes higher. Associated heat from the interaction of electromagnetic radiation increases as we move further. We pass along the threshold where radiation becomes visible. Beyond this threshold is where radiation, depending on the amount of exposure, becomes dangerous to living tissue. Sunlight gives off ultraviolet rays. Too much exposure on a hot sunny day can burn skin. X-rays are also ionizing, but this is why it is always utilized in a controlled environment in hospitals by professionals to ensure that it can be safe for people who use it. At the end of the spectrum are gamma rays. These are harmful to living tissue when exposed and are beyond dose reference levels. Those gamma rays sure sound scary. Are they here? Can they possibly harm us? There are naturally occurring gamma rays in the universe, but luckily, these are screened by the Earth's magnetic field and atmosphere. The collision of the highly energetic solar particles with Earth's atmosphere results in the beautiful auroras seen only in the Earth's poles. There are artificial sources of gamma rays, such as nuclear fission from nuclear reactors and other physics experiments like nuclear fusion. Whoa! So cool! Wait, I shouldn't be here, right? That was so cool! I always wondered how nuclear reactors look like. Thanks for showing that to me! No problem! Now going back to the question whether your cell phone emits dangerous radiation caused by cosmic rays passing by our planet? I now know the answer! Thank you! I learned a lot. That's great. Bye.